your official voice of youth and high school sports. I am Chad Ricardo. Today, I got a very special guest in the building, my dear friend, Mr. Clark Ray, director of the D.C. State Athletic Association. Clark, thank you very much for taking a couple of moments with me here today. Hey, man, thanks for having me, Chad. Clark, here's what I want to speak to you about, brother. Of course, the coronavirus pandemic has uh, has run the entire nation a true course a pandemic in the world that's had an, an outstanding effect on high school sports, which is what we're here to talk about today. Your organization, the DCSAA, was really the, the, the spearhead, the leader in terms of the D.C., Maryland, and Virginia area in moving the calendar, making a shift to it to provide hope for the student-athletes. What was your thought process as you made that step and the other two uh, regions decided to follow? Well, look, Chad, uh, first of all, I mean, full disclosure, I am not a medical professional. I'm not an epidemiologist. Uh, so we followed the science. We have a, uh, what I believe is a, a very uh, dedicated and top-notch uh, public health uh, professionals in the District of Columbia. Uh, we took our cue uh, from them as to what we would be allowed and not allowed uh, to do. And we uh, met with all of our uh, member conferences, member schools, and it was just the best decision. It was an easy decision to make, but a hard decision to like, you know, press the button and say, this is, this is what we're doing. And as we take a look now, one of the one of one of the side effects, if you will, of not having not only athletics, but also school is that student athletes are left with a lot of free time. And whether we're talking about uh, young people or whether we're talking about adults, when you have idle time that can potentially lead to making uh, negative decisions. I have talked to coaches all throughout uh, the DC region and what they have said to me is, we just gotta be around our kids. You know, fine, we can't play right now, that's cool, but we want to be able to be around our kids to provide structure, to, to provide leadership and guidance to them. I know that the DCSAA is beginning to uh, make strides to make it so that that can happen safely. What are you all up to? Well, look, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, uh, people understand that there's a public health uh, issue here with, with COVID-19. But what the virus has also done is created a socioeconomic uh, difference between those who have and those who have not. If a student athlete can afford to play and pay, they can participate. Let's be clear, athletics has not stopped in the DMV. Athletics are taking place all throughout in via an AAU programs, via select teams, via travel teams, whether it's football seven on seven, softball travel, baseball travel, soccer. I mean, it's taking place. So if a student can pay, they can play. If a student has recognizable talent, they get asked by one of these teams to play. And then you leave a segment of the student population that is, is just there. I mean, they're not sitting at home. They're not sitting at home just wearing a mask. They are working out sometimes on their own, sometimes with their buddies, with or without guidance. And if they're not working out, they're idle. And we both know that has led to a very um, discouraging situations sometimes with some of our student athletes in the district and the surrounding area. This presents an opportunity then. Is it, is it the case the DCSAA has a desire then to be able to, uh, to, to make it so that coaches and student athletes have a chance to get together? And Absolutely. Look, uh, Maryland and Virginia have already allowed uh, non-contact skill development drills to take place. Uh, we were very methodical uh, with uh, easing back into that. We created a, um, what we called a student athlete re-engagement guidance document. We submitted that document for review to the Department of Health. They were very methodical. Uh, they got back to us last Friday and said, hey, the guidance you presented falls within our uh, guidance for a phase two reopening uh, that the mayor of the District of Columbia approved back in June. And so we took that guidance and then we even created what we consider a more restrictive guidance, but we're going to allow beginning September 1, our student athletes to begin to re-engage with their high school coach. This is a non-contact, voluntary skill development 
with very, very restricted uh, guidance being given. I mean, there can be no contact. You can't practice. You can't scrimmage. But it is the re-engagement process that we feel is important for our student athletes. For many of them, a coach is their mentor. A coach is a is an authority, a, a, sometimes a parent or a caregiver figure in their life. And it's important to reestablish that connection. If we're allowed to play next year, you can't just like all of a sudden flip a light switch on and say, let's play. They've got to have some kind of conditioning, reconditioning. I mean, we don't know what's happening across the country. Just last week, three student athletes died. Two of them were cross country runners and one was a football player. Football player from the state of Arkansas, a cross country runner, I believe from California and one from Texas. So we don't know what, what is taking place. We don't know uh, if there was COVID related or not. Everyone wants to jump to that. You take a look at Georgia State, the quarterback with a myocarditis with just being diagnosed. We don't know what the effect the virus is having on our student athletes, but at some point there's got to be a re-engagement. Again, this is not practice. This is not scrimmaging. There's no competition. It is just skill development drills um, and an opportunity for them to reconnect. Student athletes being back around their coaches in a structured and safe environment. I do agree that that is a, a, a great opportunity for the kids in the community. And of course, the DCSAA encompasses uh, private schools, encompasses uh, charter schools, encompasses public schools as well. Is this, uh, does this ring true for all of those schools under the DCSAA flag? Well, look, we are allowing that at, at the state level, but we were very clear in our communication to the athletic directors of our school memberships. You need to get, you need to notify your LEA, the local education agency in the district. DC public schools are their own LEA. So we're asking all of the district public schools, if they want to re-engage in this manner under this guidance, they need to get permission from or have conversations with their school administration leadership. A lot of our charter schools and a lot of our private schools are their own LEA. So they need to have those conversations with their school administration and their school leadership. And if they decide to re-engage in this manner, uh, we have given them the guidance to do so, which we believe is very thorough. You can go to the DCSAA uh, sports.org website, look at it. The guidance is posted. Uh, it has, you know, I myself sit on the National uh, Federation of State High School Sports Medicine Advisory Committee, along with Jennifer Reeling, who's the head athletic trainer at H.G. Uh, Woodson, and Christina uh, Carrillo, who's over at Friendship uh, Collegiate uh, so they really marshaled this document together. We had, it has had engagement from and review by all of our member schools, those who are part of conferences in the district. So I feel really good that what we put out is great guidance, uh, but they gotta follow it, Chad. If they don't follow it, I mean, you know as well as I, right now what's taking place, I just said, athletics is taking place in the district and in the surrounding areas. So if students are out there participating, and they're not following the guidance, they're not wearing a mask, they're not practicing, uh, you know, washing their hands and all the hygiene requirements, and they come back to their high school pod and they infect somebody, it want, that's all it's gonna take, and then we're gonna have to shut it down. Our student athletes, you know, as when we said mask up, boy, they were excited. They wanna play, they wanna compete, but this is a very small step in what is going to be a very long process in getting back to the competition level that we also desire. You and I want, and, and our student athletes and parents want, so. Absolutely agree. We, we would all love to be in the gyms beginning uh, in that December, January timeframe and back out on the fields uh, when the fall sports uh, do come back into play. Clark Ray, DCSAA continuing to be a leader in the coronavirus uh, new normal. Thank you very much for joining me, brother. Thanks, Chad. Ricardo report, bruh!